Hello, my dear subscribers. I have some important news to share with you today. If you haven't seen my last video, I want to let you know that my old channel, Strange Stories, has been discontinued. This has happened because Google has disabled my AdSense account without any reason or warning. I was devastated to lose the channel that I've been working on for so long, but I didn't let it stop me. Instead, I created a new channel called Fascinating Stories. Fascinating Stories is all about the same topic as Strange Stories, near-death experiences. It features the same amazing testimonies sent from viewers like you, and I'm really excited about the new content that I'm creating. So if you love hearing about these incredible stories and want to keep following me on this journey, please subscribe to Fascinating Stories and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. It would mean the world to me to have your support on this new channel. Thank you so much for listening. I hope to see you on my new channel soon. My spouse and I had separated. I was hiding out with two tiny children. One of them was 16 months old. After a morning with the lawyers, I had a particularly nasty experience with my spouse. I drove him there because he doesn't drive, and I knew if I didn't accompany him to the meeting, he wouldn't go. As a result, I drove him. When I returned to the matrimonial house where I no longer resided, he invited me inside. To avoid going inside, I created an excuse. I pulled away from the curb as soon as he got out of the car. I was trembling violently. I drove directly to my friend's house where my son awaited me. Lunch was over and I needed to get him home for a nap. My friend requested that I stay. She had a horrible feeling about something. I now realized that she had a Holy Spirit mandate, but I didn't understand it at the time. She could tell I was upset and pleaded with me not to leave. But first, I wanted to organize my thoughts. So I promised her I'd return as soon as my son awoke from his nap. She grudgingly let me go. The distance between her house and mine was only a few minutes. My baby had fallen asleep in his car seat by the time I arrived home. When he was sleeping, I had a routine. I'd take him out of the car, carry him over my shoulder to the house, unlock the front door, and bring him up to his bed. Then I'd rush downstairs and open the garage door. Then I'd pull the car into the garage and shut the door. The automobile would be tucked away, and the door would be secured behind me. All that remained was to close the door to the dwelling. I was tucking my son into his cot when I noticed how serene he seemed. In the middle of the chaos, this is a little consolation. I was about to descend the stairs when I heard someone enter the hallway through the front door. I assumed it was one of my neighbors who'd seen me return home. Most likely, they were searching for a cup of tea and a discussion. I rounded the curve at the bottom of the stairs and ran into my soon-to-be ex-husband. How did he get into my house? I assumed I was hidden. How did he track me down? How did he get here? Panic began to rise within me. He was nowhere to be seen as I parked into my driveway, and there was nowhere to hide outdoors. There were no spaces between the road dwellings and the street. There was no thicket to hide behind. There are no single structures to hide behind. There was simply no place to hide. From where had he come? I'd only been upstairs for a few minutes. Oh my god, I exclaimed. Please assist me. I had a gut feeling that I needed to keep him away from the baby. So given the circumstances, I did the only thing I could think of. I welcomed him into the living room. I went to the kitchen to start making tea. That would give me a few moments to think. I knew he wanted to talk, which was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. The living room was unfurnished. I sat in my one armchair, and he sat on the sofa's edge. I felt tense. My spouse began to speak. He wished for me to return to him and give him another chance. He desired for us to be a family. He couldn't understand that it was far too late because he had shattered any trust, love, or positive sentiments I had for him. I can't let you leave, he begged me suddenly. I just can't let go of the kids. I can't bear the thought of losing you. Oh God, I exclaimed in agony. I need your assistance. This is too much for me. I was screaming on the inside. For a little moment, I shifted the topic away from us. I was in urgent need. I believed he was going to depart, but he stayed. Then. He asked if he might borrow my car. 
I had no choice but to get him out of my house. My husband lacked a driver's license. As far as I know, he had never driven a car. At the time, I didn't care if the car ever returned. If that's what it takes, he can have the automobile. I had exhausted all sensible thought. I requested that he have our common buddy return the car in time for me to pick up my kid from school. And then he was gone, just as swiftly as he had appeared. I broke out in a cold sweat. I needed to pick up my kid from school, and it was a few minutes after 3 o'clock. My son was still sleeping, but I wouldn't wake him up until... I'd have to wake him up at 10 minutes after 3. When the automobile arrived into the driveway, it was around 9 minutes past 3 o'clock. The bright afternoon sun reflected off the hood. I couldn't see the driver's face, but I believed he was a common buddy. The driver opened the door and exited the vehicle. It had to be my husband. I just had 20 minutes to wake the baby, get to school, and pick up my daughter. I hoped I could acquire the keys from my spouse without allowing him to enter the house. But he stormed into the house before I could even reach to the door to lock it. He was upset again, and he was carrying a manila envelope. He stormed into the kitchen, tossing the envelope onto the table. He picked up the package and brought out the separation agreement while yelling at me. He wrote his name across the bottom in defiance, still ranting at me as he signed. If that's what you want, go ahead and get it, he growled. I needed to get away from that rage. I went back to the living room. He followed me. He walked across the room and sat on the sofa's edge. He began pleading with me not to harm him. I sat like a stone in the armchair. I was helpless. I despised him and wished he would leave. But I couldn't, because I was afraid of him. I couldn't afford to make a mistake right now. My spouse approached me and placed his hand on my knee. He was now sobbing and repeating, I can't give you up. I can't give you up. His grip on my leg tightened unexpectedly. I cast a short glance into his eyes. I'm not going to give you up, he growled. I observed his demeanor shift in front of my eyes in the span of one or two seconds. I'd seen him do it before when he was drunk. This time, however, he was sober and extremely dangerous. It was sudden and clear, as if someone had drawn a curtain over his soul's window. Before I could respond, his hands flew to my throat and he started choking me. My God, I exclaimed. He was going to murder me. I'm going to murder you, he declared. I ripped at his hands, and we both collapsed onto the carpet. I tried to move his hands away from my neck, but he was simply too powerful. If only I could get one or two fingers between his hands and my throat. I couldn't take a breath. I rolled along the carpet, dragging him along with me. For a split second, his grip loosened. It was just enough to take a breath. We fought some more. He was cursing and yelling at me. My heart was racing. Every time I managed to break free from his grip long enough to take a ragged breath, his fingers grabbed my neck with a renewed vigor. I was about to die because I was suffocating to death. My children raced through my head as I was on the edge of passing out. What would happen to them, I wondered. Who would look after them? I couldn't possibly die. I had babies to look after. I lashed out with my arms and legs, landing a strike. My husband's grasp loosened briefly, and I scrambled away from him. I needed to get to the front door. He was, however, far too swift for me. He obstructed the path to the kitchen, leading me to leap for the door. With a gleam of metal in his hand, he rushed back into the passage. He snatched my arm and threw me to the ground. As his hand flew towards me, my arm reflexively rose to defend my face. I was now crouched beneath him, one of my hands clawing at his throat. I attempted to slam my knee into his groin. I tried biting and kicking him to get away from him. We continued to wrestle, first in the hallway and then in the living room. The carpet now had blood streaks on it. There were blood splatters on the walls. He had me pinned to the floor and snarled, I'm going to murder you.
for the third time. I couldn't breathe even though I was still battling. He had successfully shut off my oxygen supply and I knew I would die in the following few seconds. I yielded and my panic dissipated. As I fell into the darkness, I told myself, Lord, I'm ready to die. I was surrounded in a pure, brilliant light and no longer had a corporeal body. But did I still exist? I couldn't see because I didn't have eyes, but I peered around. I was in the middle of a great nothingness, but it wasn't empty. It was entirely filled with the living God's presence. There are no words in English that can express where I was. I was smack dab in the thick of glory. The Lord then embraced me in His love and held me close to His breast. I was filled to the core of my being with His calm that surpasses all comprehension. I sensed His affection for me. Oh my goodness, I had no idea He cared that much for me. Wrapped in that love, wrapped in the arms of my Father, I completely and without hesitation abandoned my will, myself, and everything that I was. I was in my father's arms, and all I wanted to do was stay there forever. I informed my father that I was ready to return home. My father just said things to me. But what I can tell you is that he told me he was waiting for me to give my will, myself, and my life to him. Then he told me that he was returning me because it wasn't yet time for me to return home. My father gave me a fresh lease on life, both physically and spiritually. He returned me to the floor of that modest living room. He moved my husband away from me, releasing his grip on my throat. I gradually became aware that I was back in the world. My entire body hurt as I lay on the living room carpet. When I gently opened my eyes, I noticed my spouse crashed on the carpet a few feet away from me. Tears streamed down his cheeks, and there was blood all over his face. His shirt and jeans were stained with blood, and he was sobbing and wailing. I was gradually able to hear the words, What have I done? He kept asking. Oh my God, what did I do? I couldn't figure out why he was covered in blood. I had no idea why he was quoted in my blood at the time. He was sobbing and burying his face in his hands. I was no longer terrified. I had confronted death and all dread had vanished. I knew I had to get him out of the house as soon as possible. He was starting to mumble incoherently now. I spoke up and when he saw that I was still alive, he shakily rose to his feet. He seemed to notice that he was covered in blood for the first time. He grew terrified. I carefully rose from the floor and stood up, speaking quietly. Because of the damage to my throat, there was little remained of my voice. My throat was sore and my voice was raspy, but I had to persuade him to go. He pleaded with me not to call the cops and I assured him that I would not. He would hear whatever he wanted to hear but we were both aware that he can go with blood on his clothes. I walked upstairs and picked out a pair of slacks that I thought would fit him. When I handed them to him, he swiftly put them on, but clung to the bloodied ones. He wasn't sure what to do. He began to grow irritated and crazy once more. I was speaking to him, attempting to express what he desired to hear. At the same time, I attempted to direct him to the front entrance. I am still not sure what prompted him to depart. Only the Lord could have done it. It appeared as if I shoved him down the hall and out the front door. I recall immediately shutting the door after pushing him out. Then I dashed back into the kitchen to check which way he was running. It only took me five seconds to get to the kitchen window. But when I peered out the window, he was gone. He was nowhere to be found. He had vanished with no trace. My body went into shock at that point. There is a police report, a hospital report, and images of my injuries in this case. When I arrived at the hospital, a police officer was stationed outside the entrance to my room. In less than six months, I relocated, divorced, changed my and my family's names, and went into hiding 
My ex-husband is still alive and quite dangerous, despite the fact that he resides in a distant country. Thank you.